Okay, in chapter chapter 2.8 or section 2.8, we're going to start naming. Now, naming is something that takes a while to get. A couple, couple times through, you're going to have to do a lot of homework in order to get this. Don't push it off. Don't ignore it. It will come back up to haunt you later. So just learn how to do it right the first time. And there are four different things that we're going to name. We're going to start with ionic compounds. Um, they tend to be a little bit easier. You already know how to name some of these, I, I guarantee it. So ionic, an ionic compound means you have a cation and an anion. Uh, usually this is a metal and a non-metal, or a metal and a polyatomic ion, or two polyatomic ions, but you have a cation and an anion. And so you're going to break it down, you're going to just name those two pieces. So if you had something, like I said, you already know some of these. So if you had something like NaCl, how do you name NaCl? All right, NaCl. Um, Na is sodium and Cl is chlorine. So when you put this together, you get sodium chloride. So how did we get that name? We just changed the anion ending to ide. So we have here sodium chloride. So anytime you see something that kind of looks like sodium chloride, like this is a metal and this is a non-metal. So just going back to, you know, what's a metal, what's a non-metal. Metals are over here underneath this staircase. These are all metals. And then your non-metals are upstairs. So we have sodium over here, which is a metal. And then chlorine is a non-metal. Um, so when you put those a, a cation and an anion together, you have an ionic compound and you get sodium chloride. So all we're doing is changing the ending of the uh, of the anion. The um, Nothing happens to the cation, just name it just the same. Now, some cations don't have fixed charges. Some of these metals will have more than one possible charge, and usually those are the transition metals. So anything in group one always has a plus one charge. Anything in group two always has a plus two charge, right? So everything here has a plus one, everything here is a plus two. A lot of these ones can change. Not all of them. I mean, here we have heavier metals down here too. So not just the transition metals, but you have something like lead. Um, we'll, we'll see that one a couple of times. So a lot of these can change. Um, silver has a fixed charge, it's always plus one. Zinc is plus two, and aluminum is plus three. So when you have an ionic compound that has that has silver, silver, uh, zinc, and aluminum, you don't need to use Roman numerals. If you have a group one metal, these are always plus one. These are always plus two. These are always one, two, three. You don't need to um, indicate what type of metal you have because there there's only one type. You're only going to have one. But something like iron uh, and copper go back to iron and copper. Here's iron, here's copper. They're in this transition metal um, area where they can, you can have different forms. You can have different oxidation states. You can have iron 2, you can have iron 3, you can have copper 1, copper 2. Um, and if you scroll back up to this chart, um, you can see these different oxidation states in here. Maybe. Yep, so there's the uh, copper two and there's copper one so they're listed in there a couple different times so you have to be able to indicate that in the name you need to know what type of metal you have and the way you do that is by putting roman numerals um, and the uh, the ion name so if you had something um, and we'll have a couple examples down here but something like FeCl2 you have to figure out do I have um, you know to de deconstruct this this came from iron 2 plus and chloride minus, right? And when I do my crisscross and put those together, I get FeCl2. And the way you would name that um, is iron and then parentheses 2, right? You're still just naming this iron 2 plus ion, which is iron 2, and then you have chloride. Don't forget to change the ending of the anion name. You do the same thing with copper, and we'll do a bunch of examples. Um, in the homework, there's a bunch of homework problems. There are supplemental problems too. There's like huge lists of these things to name. So make sure you practice those. Um, so when you have oxy anions, so when we're talking about anions, so when you have something like uh, nitrate. So remember I asked you to memorize all of the eights, everything in this list right before this section here, right? You have uh, like nitrate. In order to figure out what nitrite looks like, you just get rid of one of the oxygens. So NO2 minus is nitrite. So this is just a trick on how to figure out more of these polyatomic ion names. Now you just change that 8 to ite. The 8 ate an extra oxygen. You can do the same thing with chlorate to chlorite. Chlorate is ClO3 minus, right? Chlorite is ClO2 minus. All right. 
So that's what that section's all about, just how do you get more of these um, polyatomic ion names. And these are kind of all in that table as well. So you have carbonate, nitrate, phosphate, sulfate. Um, notice that the number of oxygens is not necessarily, like all the eights have three or something like that. So this phosphate has, has four oxygens, sulfate has four, the perchlorate ion has four, but nitrate has three, carbonate has three. Um, and the book kind of goes through this a little bit. If you just memorize that list that I gave you, you should be fine. Um, all right, so another way to get uh, more of these polyatomic ions, if you memorize the eight, then you can you can learn the simple trick to go, and this works uh, to figure out you know all of, all of these ions. So basically, you know this row, you know that this is chlorate, uh, and this series applies to uh, chlorate, brom uh, chlorine, bromine, and, and iodine. Um, those three atoms, this will work for all of them, this little trick we're going to show. So this guy right here, this is chlorate. This is the only one that I asked you to memorize in that list. Now, what would you guess BRO3 minus would be? It's bromate. Do you see the, the, it looks pretty similar. And then iodate is over here. That one's kind of hard to spell, or kind of hard to say. It feels wrong. So to go from eight to ite, all you're gonna do is get rid of this eight, you get rid of an oxygen. So now this is chlorite, and this guy is bromite. We're actually answering this question down here um, as we're doing this, and this is iodite. Now, <laughs> now what we're gonna do is add a prefix and, um, and and keep keep this ending. When I get rid of one more, now I'm gonna add the prefix hypo. So again, we're, all we're doing right now is taking, you know, starting with one polyatomic ion that we had to memorize and using this you know little trick on how we can get the rest of these. So if you remember if you remember how to do it from eight to eight, right, you just get rid of one oxygen. Um, now if you get rid of another oxygen, you're gonna add a prefix, and this is gonna become hypochlorite. So the eights always have fewer oxygens than the eights. If you're at chlorate and you add another oxygen, you're gonna add another prefix, which is just the per. So now you have perchlorate. And now you might be wondering, do I have to memorize all these? No, just memorize the trick. Memorize how to go from eight to eight, and then add a hypo chlorite. Uh, and then when you go from uh, three oxygens here to four, you're gonna add the per chlorate. So again, this only works for you know, the chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So you can pause for a second, try to figure out what what this bro minus would be, bro minus. Well, what happened? I went from eight to eight, now I'm gonna add hypo, hypo bromite. And iodite is going to become hypoiodite. And to eight, this is going to be per bromate. And this is per iodate. 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 All right, so now we have a whole bunch more of these polyatomic ions that we can deal with. And again, um, for these are ions. So when you're dealing with ionic compounds, if you put a metal in front of here or you put another cation, you'll see this come up in the ionic compounds, which is why we're dealing with it right now, because uh, these are the anion parts. Uh, and so if you have one of these polyatomic ions in a compound, you would just keep that name the same. Um, so if we had like sodium chlorite or um, anything like that, you'll see some more examples down here. This one, um, they were just asking you to basically get that middle column that we just dealt with.